Hi everyone, so um, as you've no doubt heard by now, Theresa May has survived her vote of no confidence which was brought together by the 48 letters minimum going into um, the head of the 1922 committee. We found that out last night and she faced the vote today and she won that vote. She won it by 200 votes to 117. Um, so no doubt she's very happy about that. We can go over to the House of Commons right now and see what how she's doing. There you go, she's quite happy about it. She's very happy, uh, no doubt. No, the truth is she won't be very happy. Um, this is a victory for her, but it's a bad victory. It's a very bad victory. Now, Jacob Rees-Mogg actually was interviewed just after this, and I just want to show this uh, interview with the with the guy because he did bring up something quite important here. Um, although he did, some people have said that he's overplayed his hand here. I'm not. I'm not so sure. I also accept this result, but the Prime Minister must realise that under all constitutional norms, she ought to go and see the Queen urgently and resign. And I'll tell you why. <clears throat> Constitutionally, if a Prime Minister cannot get her business through the House of Commons, and on Monday the Prime Minister stood up and said she was going to lose so heavily that she wasn't even going to present the vote, and then discovers that the overwhelming majority of her bank benches, of her non-paid backers, have voted against her, she clearly doesn't have confidence in the House of Commons, she should make way for somebody who does. So what he's saying there is the non-paid backers. Now what he means by that is um, there's about 156 members of Theresa May's cabinet. Now they should have backed the backed the Prime Minister and if they weren't going to back the Prime Minister, protocol dictates that they should resign. No, nobody did. So you can only assume that 156 of those 200 votes were from people that she already pays in her cabinet. So of the rest of them, they, uh, she lost 117 to 40 something that's over two thirds of her back benches that are not supporting her now the reason this is a really bad a bad bad thing for her it's a really bad win is that her brexit deal now if it was dead before now it's six foot under never to be reloaded you know resuscitated embalmed the lot you know ceremonies been it's not going to get through the Houses of Parliament. So she can't afford to bring that back to a, to a vote. This is why she deferred, which is well explained, this is why she deferred it, why she cancelled it. She can't allow it to go to a vote because it will lose. And what happens if she loses is then Jeremy Corbyn tables his vote of no confidence. As he explained in the, my, last, uh, my live stream on Monday, Jeremy Corbyn is not going to put a vote of no confidence forward until it's for sure she loses the support of the DUP, which is what he what would happen if she brings that deal back to the Houses of Parliament, uh, Houses of Parliament, and then Jeremy Corbyn can say, right, okay, with the SNP we can form a government, and that leads to a Jeremy Corbyn government. She cannot afford to have that vote come back to the House of Commons as it stands without changing it. Now, changing anything with addendums, blah, 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 or assurances, that doesn't wash with the EU, I'm afraid. The EU are a bunch of bureaucrats. If you don't get, have every I dotted and every T crossed, they will F you over. Go and look at some of the other treaties in the past. Go and ask Greece how that how it worked out. They will F you over if it's not actually in the document itself. So any other assurance that she brings back, it doesn't matter. She can promise everybody a pony. Doesn't matter. It's not in the document. So it will get rejected. And if it gets rejected in the House, that leads to a Jamie Corbyn government. That's the last thing that the Tories will do, I'm afraid. The last thing they will do. So now she, it's in a it's in a situation where she doesn't hold to hold the support. She can't get a deal for a good deal through. So what now? She either changes or she resigns, and I don't think she's going to change. Um, now remember, Margaret Thatcher won a vote of no confidence the first round against I think it was Michael Heseltine back in whatever year it was. And she won by 204 votes. And she resigned. Theresa May only got 200. So there's precedent there in history. 
but there's no way that she's going to allow the, they're going to allow this vote to come back as it through uh, this Brexit paper to come back to the House of Parliament as it is without it being radically changed. And as Rhys Mogg said said in that interview, to remove the backstop, which is like okay, what then? You know, you've removed the backstop. How? What's your what's your solution? And as yet, I haven't seen any of any of them come up with one. That's as it stands at the moment. Now, um, Jeremy Corbyn knows this, of course. Of course, he knows this, which is why just after this vote happened, um, he tweeted this out: "Tonight's vote changes nothing." Theresa May has lost her majority in Parliament, her government is in chaos and she's unable to deliver a Brexit deal that works for the economy and puts jobs and the economy first. And this is the important line. She must now bring her botch deal back to Parliament next week. That's why he's trying to force this vote, because he knows this vote comes to Parliament, it gets voted down, then he can table his vote of no confidence. The DUP join him, bang, Jeremy Corbyn, government with... Nicola Sturgeon, I assume, as his Deputy Prime Minister. As yet, I'm still waiting for the BBC to frame it that way, but that's the way it stands as far as I can see it. Now, there are other things that she could do other than resign, but the one thing that she can't let happen, and they cannot let happen, is for that deal to come back to the Houses of Parliament. And if she's dead set on it, the Tories will force her out. They will not... They will not let Theresa May lead them into lead, lead them to a certain Jeremy Corbyn government because that's basically the path that she's leading them down. Um, they won't let it happen. I think Peter Hitchens. I saw a quote from him today that he retweeted out that said the Tory Party would behead the Queen in Trafalgar Square if it means them remaining in power. <laughs> So they will uh, for sure for, or force her out if she's dead set on bringing this back to Parliament. That's not going to happen because that will lead to a Jeremy Corbyn government. Tune in tomorrow for the latest episode of The Great British Brexit Balls Up. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and click the bell below so you get a notification of when I drop further videos. Independent voices like mine, I'm sure you're aware by now, are being censored across all social media platforms. So please like and comment on the videos. That really does help the channel out. And share the videos wherever you can to grow the audience. If you can, please support me on Patreon. You can do it for as little as a dollar a month. I cannot do this without your help. I rely on your donations. Thanks very much for your support. It really is appreciated. Until next time, peace and take care.